Hey guys, welcome back to another video on the Hunt Showdown Guide series. In today's video, we're going to talk about the status effects in the game, or as the game calls it, conditions. The three conditions of the game wiki lists are burn, bleed, and poison. But personally, I believe there is a fourth condition the game doesn't exactly specify, but it does affect some of the other conditions, and that would be choke. It's important to get familiar with these effects, especially before talking about the monsters because a large portion of the monsters will apply a condition to you on hit and not being able to recognize the counter seize can easily cost you a game in an intense gunfight let's start off with the burning condition so what makes this unique from the others is that it can remove health chunks permanently off your hunter when you first get burned depending on what caused it it has an initial burn damage then as it continues it grays out a portion of the health chunk until it's removed then it will move to the next chunk there's three intensities to the burn. First is a light burn, which doesn't ignite the hunter on fire, but still grays out a small portion of the health trunk for each tick of damage. The next one is a medium intensity, which does ignite the hunter on fire and continues to gray out health trunks as it burns. It does take four seconds to put out a fire during a medium burn. And the last intensity is heavy burn, which greatly increases the burn speed and takes even longer at six seconds to put out. The intensity of the fire is based on how long you're in an area covered in fire or by how many ticks of fire damage you have taken from things such as incendiary ammo. But to keep it simple, the longer you stand in, in fire, the worse it gets. Now, that being said, the fire damage you take from being on fire is actually a separate damage from being in the fire itself. So the burn damage does stack. When your health is grayed out, the chunk is and but the chunk is still there, it will eventually heal itself, but at a very slow pace. Now, an advantage to fire, as stated earlier, is that it burns out health chunks permanently. But it can also do that to someone that is down. An easy way to make sure someone stays out of a fight, or at least when they get revived, they come back at an even lower amount of health. Having self skin does help with burning since it slows it down by 25%, and that does apply to when you're down. Now, there is four ways to extinguish the fire. First is just holding your action key and slowly putting out the fire. As a reminder, the 4 seconds for medium burn and 6 seconds for heavy burn. But you can also tell which burn you have by the intensity of the fire on your health bar. The second is with a, with a health pack, which does take longer, but if you're missing health, it heals you up to where your health is grayed out at. The third way is by walking into an area of choke, and it will immediately remove all burning conditions, no matter the intensity. And lastly, the fourth way is by walking into water. It will also immediately remove conditions as well. Uh, remove the condition as well. There's a four and a half way to remove fire, and that's with a vitality shot. Although while in the animation, the burning doesn't stop like the other options. So do it at your own risk. Just like fire, there is three intensities when it comes to bleeding. Light, medium, and heavy. When you are bleeding, you can tell the intensity how many blood droplets are showing on your health bar. Light bleeding has a low damage over time and only takes two seconds to stop. If you take more damage that causes bleed, such as rending damage, it can escalate the bleed from light to medium. Some rending hits can actually skip the light bleeding effect and take you straight to medium. Medium bleed does quite a bit more damage per second and takes even longer at 4 seconds to remove the condition. And the same thing applies here. If you take even more rending damage, it will escalate it to heavy bleed. Some attacks will also take you straight to heavy bleed, such as a bomb lance hit. Once you're at heavy bleed, the damage over time is extremely severe and will knock you down within seconds if not dealt with immediately. And even when dealing with it, it takes a grueling six seconds to remove the condition. Only two things can cure the bleed of condition, and that's either using the action key to remove or using a med kit. Although a lot of times it's better to use a med kit because it will heal you while also taking off the bleed. And although yes, a vitality shot can cause or can also stop bleeding just the same as it does with fire since it doesn't stop the bleeding damage during the animation it can be very risky since bleed is considerably faster to kill and can kill you quite quickly especially at low health so basically use a vitality shot at your own risk if you do use vitality shots to stop the bleeding having it with the perk bloodless which stops bleeding from escalating to condition levels should help you in this situations now the third condition is poison <sighs> Poison can be, to some, the most annoying condition to deal with. Although once poisoned, you don't take the extra damage over time like the other conditions, it does prevent you from seeing clearly and healing any damage taken. If you are bleeding or on fire, you can still remove the condition with using the action key just the same though. 
Poison does have three intensities, but since the poison effect doesn't deal damage over time, its intensities are just to describe how long the effects last and how blurry your screen gets. Light condition is any poison condition lasting 0 to 5 seconds. Medium is 5 to 15, and then heavy intensity is 15 to 20. As the intensity increases, the screen effects do get worse, and there is only one way to remove the poison condition, and that's with an antidote shot. With that being said, having an antidote shot does make you completely immune to poison and the initial poison damage that comes with it. It won't make you immune to any other forms of damage though, so if you get shot by something like a poison round, you get you don't get the poison effect, but you still take damage from the round itself. The final condition that isn't really a condition, but I do want to include, is choke. Choke is basically after the after effect of a choke bomb. It extinguishes all fires and removes all cloud of poisons from the air immediately, and walking into a choke that area will cause your hunter to start coughing loudly and flinching with each cough at random intervals. The longer you stay in, the, in a cloud, the longer the condition lasts. Also, the longer stayed in there, the shorter the intervals are between coughs and the flinching. There is no way to remove the choke condition. It doesn't deal damage, so it isn't deadly directly, but as stated, the flinching can throw off your aim by a significant amount and lead to you being killed in a gunfight. Hey guys, so this is my first video that I actually made by doing a voiceover over clips instead of doing it all in game at the same time. So it did take me a little bit longer to do this. I'm still learning how to edit videos and you know, I'm hoping to learn some more effects and a few other things. So my videos get higher quality as it goes. Uh, I would like your opinion on this style of video making. See if it's preferred over, you know, doing it in game all at once, you know, with together the video and everything or just inserting clips over a voiceover. Also, uh, I did want to mention I do have a Twitch stream. It is twitch.tv slash supremedbulldog. Uh, feel free to stop by whenever you guys want. It, I will be more, more, more likely I'll be streaming Hunt Showdown, but I do also play League of Legends, uh, Valorant, and a few other games with my friends, so I'll, I might be streaming some of that as well too. But feel free to stop by, ask any questions you have. I'll, I'll be more than happy to help you guys out with that. Thank you guys, and have a great day. Bye.